I think the governance piece is uh, safeguarding the institution, but it's also safeguarding the management of that development. So uh, the guiding principles for our use of learning analytics, um, th there's a, quite an opportunity for getting this wrong. So having uh, a body to which the implementers can refer questions is, is really important in that. But also that ongoing picture of, you know, things have changed, we, we need to check if we can do this or not do this, how would that be received, how do we communicate this, how does that fit the, the rules in, in which the institutions decided to work. We generally tend to recommend to institutions that the learning analytics governance structure be part of a larger uh, governance structure committee that is responsible for um, overarching policies, procedures, practices, programs within the institution, that it's not a standalone. Um, that's part of keeping it as more of a process and an, an, an iterative being rather than just a project that has an end date. Um, Typically what we've seen is a lot of the governance structures within institutions right now are governing projects. So they make certain decisions and changes based on one specific element or, or another. Um, so it's been a different mindset for, for institutions to shift to having a, a more iterative, continuous, dynamic um, governance structure that includes learning analytics. The experience we've had with institutions uh, and where governance lays within the institution is varied. Um, I think sometimes that's down to what is the driver for introducing learning analytics. So if, if there's a strong learning and teaching lead, that may be within a learning and teaching committee. Um, sometimes there is more of a student experience lead. Um, often we find that the, the people who, who begin the process of introducing learning analytics don't actually want to earn that process. So they're sometimes looking for some governance structure in existence. Um, it isn't always there. We do find um, some institutions are very good when we first arrive at telling us how the governance structures work and where learning analytics sits within those structures. Uh, and, that, and that's wonderful to hear how organized they, they are. Elsewhere, we have met people who openly tell us our governance structures are not very good at all. And we need to look at the organization uh, before we can really do anything sensible here. The other thing that we've seen is um, it, it developing, I guess, um, amongst institutions is that they may have a learning analytics committee that reports into a larger governance structure or a larger committee, for example, a student engagement committee. And that's sort of the process for, for changes being monitored for the learning analytics specifically, but then also rolling up to a larger overall program so that, that how those learning analytics changes affect changes within the institution are also addressed. I think that's important because um, the, the change is, is an organizational development, it's about cultural issues, so um, it, it really shouldn't be an IT project, but to actually pigeonhole it under a, a particular committee sometimes can, can be difficult. There needs to be that communication across all areas affected by implementing learning analytics. Who should be involved in governance? Um, really key stakeholders were interested in, in that role of champion for the organisation but also uh, champions for each stakeholder group. It's really important that these people instill confidence in their colleagues. So if we take the, the academic um, role, somebody who leads that area should be uh, respected by their colleagues and believed by their colleagues. Similarly, we'd be saying uh, the Students' Union should be involved. Um, ethical considerations will change over time, so initially the work may ask certain questions, use certain data. Over time that will change, there'll be new data sets, new questions asked, new ways of using that data, so uh, continuously uh, governing that procedure, giving confidence to the institution that the work is being done within a set of rules which protect the individual 
but also try and uh, achieve the goals of the institution are key. The, the governance issues are kind of broader than just the data governance. Um, generally, we find institutions are, are pretty well organised. It's a legal response. They understand data issues in, in this area. What we do talk with institutions about is sometimes around how learning analytics will actually be used. We would talk about this being uh, focused on the student and we're kind of worried about what the data some, sometimes says an interpretation of that. So the data can tell you what but not why something occurs, which is why humans we feel quite strongly need to be involved. So one approach we've heard is our students are adults, we will show them the data and leave them to seek help. We're really quite concerned that that approach um, may work later when a student's in the third year perhaps, but particularly in those early years when, when the students are joining an institution, they're not familiar with higher education, they don't know what support's available, that uh, a human personal tutoring system or such, um, engaging in that conversation with the students. We've experienced with institutions who, who sometimes can kind of start from that students should be independent learners, they are adults. And we'll talk uh, a little, it doesn't take much conversation usually to, to agree that yes, our students should certainly leave in that state. But there, there are generally people in the room who will um, state students are not in that position in the first year and we do need to give them more support. So really, uh, you know, we just try and generate conversations with, with a mixed group of people. But this is setting the, the, the philosophy for the use of learning analytics in the institution. The governance really isn't just about data, it's also about interventions, it's about processes, it's about policies, it's about, so, th so there's, a, there's a governance structure related to any type of change that's going to result from learning analytics, including how will this information be used to benefit the student and who will be doing the intervening. We find um, actually policy, process and practice are uh, three tremendous headings to talk to people about because there are sometimes policies but there are no processes in place to support that policy and even where there are processes to support the policy, sometimes individuals' practice is completely different. So trying to get those things lined up uh, is re really important for success. In terms of the differences between the governance structure and a management structure or process within an institution, governance is what I think we view as being the overarching body that is ensuring that the learning analytics changes are also being incorporated into overall university strategy. Management tends to be more the management of the specific um, aspects of learning analytics. If it's the management of the technical solution, if it's the management of um, developing new policies and procedures, the management of certain elements that all report into a centralized governance structure. Um, it's also about ownership versus um, management, again, of, of, of the different aspects. So usually a governance, there will be someone on that governance uh, committee or governance structure that will own, um, basically meaning that if, if something goes awry, that it's, it's, they are the ones who, who might answer to it, and they're guiding those that might be managing the different pieces. We believe that students should be involved in every aspect of learning analytics, whether it's helping decide on the messaging for communications, it's deciding how to implement certain changes, um, how to involve other students uh, in, in piloting or anything like that. Um, since this is actually for students, uh, having their voices heard and having their involvement is of the utmost importance. If, if they're not involved in making some of the decisions about how this will affect them, it's not going to work. It's not going to go over well. Um, it also helps create advocates within students, which they will absolutely listen more to their peers than they will someone within the institution saying, you will do this. Um, so having their voice heard is, is, is extremely important. I'd, I'd perhaps in some cases go further than, than just having the student's voice heard. So we, um, we come across cases of consultation with students. Um, the students are informed, we get some feedback, and that, that's the end of the engagement. 
there, there are some aspects of learning analytics which are you know, deliberately targeted at students. I would actually advocate student-led in this case rather than students being consulted. Um, there are other areas as well where the, 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 that student communication piece, they're just so much stronger at communicating with other students and understanding um, what people need in a way which you know, um, institutionalised folks like me, um, the, the students don't want to listen. So I think you know, put, putting the students in charge where you can is brilliant.